When I started this restoration, I wished to retain as much of the old layer as possible. In particular, I wanted to use as many of the old Holmby buildings and structures. The buildings were removed and stored for future use, but the platforms were left in place on the layer. The fencing will be removed, cleaned, repainted and replaced, but this time the right way round. In error it was positioned back to front on the original layout. The platforms have been purchased second hand and were in reasonable condition, but had some issues in them which need to be sorted. Firstly, there are a number of holes which need to be filled. Some were created by Hornby for fitting station accessories, some were moulding holes, and some had been made by a previous owner. The platforms are edged with what look like thick white paving slabs. If they are meant to be paving slabs they are too proud and too white, but if they are meant to be the white line edging the platform then they are too wide and they should not continue down the ramps at the platform ends. In either case they need to be sanded to make them thinner and to remove the white paint. The platform surface seems to vary from section to section, some sections being smoother than others. These need to be sanded to give a much more uniform surface. I have filled and sanded the holes and sanded the platform paving slabs and platform surfaces. The tops of the Hornby platforms seem to be made of a very hard plastic which has not taken to sanding very well and the filled holes, although flush with the platform surface, can still be seen. The paving slabs look a little better though. I have airbrushed the platform surfaces in a grey colour, but the differences between the filled sections and the original Hornby finish are still noticeable. This is especially so looking into the light. I have given this platform ramp a much more thorough sanding and another coat of grey paint, this time brushed on as it's only a small area. The original surface is now much smoother, but the difference between it and the filled section is still too obvious. The slabs however look much better now they are no longer brilliant white. It is beginning to dawn on me that even with a lot more sanding, filling and painting I may never achieve the smooth finish I am after. Also, there is another issue that has been nagging away at me for some time now. Looking along the layout, it is all too obvious that there is a large gap between the coach and the platform edge. It measures some 16mm in places, which equates to about 4 feet in real life. Sharp curves, Hornby track geometry and the track plan we adopted all meant that the Hornby platforms were just too narrow for the positions they were placed in. Fine for my then young son's train set, but irritating now for his dad. I had thought I might leave the platforms in place, but I now feel that if I do, it will be something I may always regret. I have decided therefore that I will bite the bullet and build some new, wider platforms. This bothered me a little for a while, as A, I'm inherently lazy and this would mean more work, but B, also it's changing the nature of the project I embarked upon. Instead of a restoration, it's now becoming more of a rebuild, but maybe this doesn't matter if the end result turns out to be better. I do tend to beat myself up over my hobby and things like this vex me probably more than they should. On the plus side, it will give me a good excuse to incorporate some buildings from one of my old layouts instead of the Hornby structures. So some positive news. After much work, the new platforms have now been built and have been temporarily placed in their position on the layout. Initial impressions are that they look a lot better than the old Hornby ones. In particular, the gap between the platform edges and the rolling stock is now much reduced. 
A slightly unexpected outcome is the shape of the new island platform. In order to accommodate the overhang on locos and coaches on the sharp curves at this end of the layout, the platform edge has now become, well, scalloped a bit. At first I was not much struck by the new shape, but now I actually rather like it. The rectangular holes in the platform ends are for the running in boards. The platforms are constructed using Pico platform ramps and edges, some of which are new and some of which are from a previous layout of mine, topped off with one and a half millimeter plastic sheet. The edges have had to have slots cut in them every so often to enable them to fit round the sharp curves. Any gaps visible following this process have been filled with milliput and sanded to give a smooth finish. This underneath view of one of the platforms shows the regular bracing made once again out of one and a half millimeter plastic which helps keep the whole structure rigid. The platforms are now finished and in place on the layout. Construction has taken about six weeks which is longer than envisaged but then the plan was originally merely to reuse and refurbish the old Hornby platforms. Instead I now have two completely new platforms and I must say I'm very pleased with them. The platform surfaces have been airbrushed using a mixture of grey and white humbral enamels with a dash of brown added in. On completion however I discovered that the surface was easily marked so I decided to protect it with a coat of humbral varnish. However the varnish marked even more easily than the paint so it was removed. I'll now have to take great care when I get round to adding station buildings, people etc to ensure it doesn't mark in the future. The paving slabs at the edges of the platforms were masked off and brush painted. A mixture of grey, cream and brown humbral enamels gave the colour I was after. Once dry the slabs were masked off again, this time nearer the platform edge and the white line was also brush paint painted. As a general rule I never use pure white anywhere on a layout as I believe it looks just too white. So for this line I used a mixture of three parts white to one part light grey which seemed to tone things down nicely. As you can see the white line no longer continues down the ramps at the end of the platform. Also there is no white line round the rear of the platforms. As I mentioned earlier I had originally planned to reuse the Hornby fencing but discovered that this would not easily fit onto the new Pico platform edges. Also to use it the right way round with the horizontal bars facing away from the platform would have meant laboriously cutting the large support slab feet from the fence so I decided to scrap it and use Pico Great Western Railway fencing instead. To support the fence, pieces of small brass rod were super glued to the uprights on the rear of the fence before painting. Holes were drilled in the platform to accommodate these and for additional strengthening the lower parts of the rods were super glued to the Pico platform faces. A quick dab of paint covered the rods quite well but it doesn't matter too much as they face away from the normal viewing position. The fences were brush painted with precision paint southern region cream and given a quick weather to tone down the as new finish. The weathering was simply done by dry brushing a little humbral number 64 light grey onto the fence. A gate has been incorporated at the top of the ramp leading from the platform to the station yard. One part of the original Hornby platform I did reuse was the steps unit leading up from the station yard to the rear of where the station buildings will be situated. I cut it down in size to fit the location, painted it and fitted Pico fencing 
to match the rest of the platform. The gaps showing on the platform are where the base for the station building has not yet been bedded in. Overall though, I am very pleased with the platforms and the Pico fencing looks much finer and much more to scale than the Hornby that it replaces. It does of course mean that the Hornby station buildings will now look a bit out of place and will therefore not be included on the final layout. Here are the running boards temporarily placed in position on the platforms. Since the video I made on the construction of the running in boards, I have reprinted the names, but this time on glossy photo paper. I think the shine looks more realistic and much more like the enamel signs that the southern region used to use. That's all for now. See you next time.